it's common to want to make several SwiftUI views in a loop. For example, if you have an array of names, you might want to loop over those names, making each one into a text view. Or an array of menu items, go over each one and turn it into a picture. SwiftUI gives us a special view for this purpose called for each. It can loop over arrays and ranges, and even better, for each is not restricted by SwiftUI's 10 child limit because it makes them all dynamically. This thing will run a closure once for every item in your array or range, and it'll pass in the current item you're looping over. For example, if you are looping from zero to 100, it'll pass in zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, and so on. For example, we could make a form with 100 rows by doing form for each zero to 100, number in, text row of number, like that. And you can see it counts down way off the screen, it'll scroll very, very far down. Now because this thing here is a closure, what do you want to do with each item you're looking at? We can use shorthand syntax instead. I remove number in and then just say dollar zero to get exactly the same result. Now for it is particularly useful with SwiftUI's pick of view. This will show a selection of options and the user can choose one. Show us off, we're going to define a view here that will have an array of possible student names, have an at state property with a currently selected student name, have a picker that shows users the options to choose from and lets them choose one bind to that at state property, and then a for each loop which will go over all possible student names, turning them into text views. So to do that, we'll first say there's a new array property called students equal to an array of Harry and Hermione and Ron. Below that is our at state private var property to store selected student. And I'll do Harry as a default. Inside the body, I'm gonna say there is a navigation view, then our form. Inside the form, I'll place a picker with a title of select your student. And the selection for this will be stored in dollar selected student. So it reads and writes that value. As for what should be in the picker, this is our for each loop. I'll say for each students, oops, for each open parens even, students, id is backslash dot self, more on that shortly, text dollar zero. Now there's not a lot of code in there but it's worth us clarifying a few things. We have already our students array up here, Harry, Hermione, and Ron. That's fixed, it's not changing, it's constant. Below that though, is something that will change, our selected student at state property. This is the one the user chose, or its default value right now. That will change, so it has to be marked at state. Down here's our picker, this thing, will show the options to the users. It has a title here, select your student. This obviously shows on the screen as you can see, but also has read out the things like voiceover, so screen readers know what's happening on the screen. This picker has a two-way binding, dollar selected student, so that whenever it changes, it writes a property. So it reads and writes it. Then inside the for each, for each here, we loop over all students, and turn it into a text view. Now the only probably confusing part in here, I think, is this for each line. I mean, it starts off easy, go over, great. The students array, great. Making a text view for each student, also great. But this ID self part, that matters, that's important. And this exists because SwiftUI needs to be able to identify every unique view on the screen. So it knows when things have changed. For example, if we rearranged our array, so Ron came first, so it's Ron, Harry, Hermione, SwiftUI would like to move Ron to the top of the list, because it knows it's first. And so we've got to tell SwiftUI how it can identify uniquely each item in our string array. What about each string makes it unique? Now, if we had an array of structs, we might say, you know, my struct's got a title property, and, and that's unique or my strict struct has a, an ID integer, and that's unique. 
Here, though, it's just an array of strings. The only thing that's unique about the string ron is the string itself. That's the only thing we have. The strings are naturally unique. And so whether for each was saying, hey, um, make lots of use for me, please, based on this student's array. But when SwiftUI asks us what identifier makes each string unique, we're going to say, actually, the string itself. The strings themselves are unique. This does, of course, mean if you have duplicate strings in your array, you might hit problems. But here it's just fine. Anyway, go ahead and run that and see what you think. You should now see something quite impressive, I believe. It should say all being well. Select your student, Harry. Let's find out. Come on, Mac, you can do it. Boom. Select your student, Harry. When I press on it, a new screen slides in with Harry checked. I can choose Ron instead. And now it says Ron and the first screen. We're going to look more at these things later on because they're really, really useful. But that's enough for this project. And this is the final part of the overview for this project. That's almost time to get started building the real code. If you want to save your example code away, please do so now. Copy the project somewhere else if you want to. When you're done, though, I'd like you to undo the changes made to content view. Put it back as it was in the beginning, like just text hello world and padding. So we've got a clean slate to work from in the very next chapter.